is up guys it's your boy alex and welcome back to the brave lionheart channel and we are back with another reaction video yet again <laughs> i don't know why it went a little too crazy there uh but yes we are back with another reaction video and this is one that has been actually kind of long requested for a while actually this was requested uh as a video last year but considering it was also it was almost the end of the year and it was almost the end of Christmas. I couldn't really get into that video because of the ton of like requests that I got from you guys and other stuff that I've been trying to get to and yada, yada, yada. So this is kind of a early, late-ish Christmas uh, reaction video that was requested that I react to. So you get the idea now. Let me just move the camera down just a little bit so you guys can see me better. But yes, we are doing uh, a sort of Christmas uh, video sort of thing. This is this was a request for me to react to the YouTube channel Cell Specs. Now I have actually watched Cell Specs before. She mostly does uh, animated movie reviews or any type of review of like new stuff that comes out, and she does like her own opinions on certain trailers that come out. But this particular video, we're taking a look look at her list for the worst and best Christmas Carol adaptations. Now, we all know about the Christmas Carol and its story. You know, grouchy old miser hates Christmas, visited by three spirits, and he's taught a lesson that to respect Christmas and actually, you know, honor his family and stuff like that and, you know, be a nice person. We all know that. In fact, recently, Star Kid did their own uh, show uh, about Christmas Carol, their own take on A Christmas Carol, if it was done in the 80s and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, sadly, that show is not on you on YouTube. The songs are, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if I could, you know, talk about the songs or do a reaction to the those songs. Let me know in the comment section if you guys want me to talk or do a reaction to the songs of Star Kid. You know, something like that. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, moving on from that, there have actually been a ton of, like, different A uh, adaptations, some that I know, and some that I have not actually heard of, and we're gonna be taking a look at that today. So yeah, this intro went on way too long, let's just get the video started. I forgot to mention that this video, the request was for two videos, because this was a two-parter list. So I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work. Hopefully this entire video doesn't end up being an hour long once I'm editing it. So we'll see how that goes. So anyway, I'm assuming we're starting off with the worst Christmas specials or Christmas specials of Christmas Carol, I guess. We'll figure out once we get into the video. Anyway, so with that being said, let's get started with Cell Specs' Worst to Best Christmas Carol Adaptations. Again, not sure I'm going to figure out the title, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, start the video in three, two. One, and let's go. I'll figure out the title once I get all the videos done and the editing started, which is going to take a long, long time. Uh, anyway. Stories, none are as revered as Charles Dickens' 1843 Christmas Carol that wasn't made for the purpose Oh, of Mr. Magoo. I forgot Simpsons did a parody take on uh, that commentary as well as elements of fantasy and horror so oh there was a my little pony one no okay season, you are wrong and be quiet and if christmas carol isn't the most adapted work of oh the is the smurfs one gonna be on this list oh please some of the animaniacs one. oh this one might be on the list if it's possible and ranking them subjectively worst to best because that's kind of my thing well about that so in my infinite wisdom to try and cover every animated Christmas Carol, obviously a significant amount of them were going to be a bunch of forgettable direct-to-video bargain bin basement. Oh, jeez. Talk about some of those, but we can also get a chunk of them out of the way just for the sake of reducing repetition. Particularly, there are three movies that are all pretty similar to each other. Over an hmm. hour long, all pretty thorough adaptations with a lot of lines that are book accurate adjacent but all with fairly dated limited and unremarkable animation with only very minor things that make them remotely distinct like this it's like a christmas carol anime for some reason whoa okay jacob marley definitely had some makeup work done and this one 
from 93 made by jet lag and good times oh yeah in fact i think phalus did a talk about some of the good tie adaptations of like other stories you guys should definitely check out that channel he's an awesome like uh if you don't know who phalus is he's from channel awesome he used to be from channel awesome Hopefully, do the Flintstones one. They definitely had to do a Jetsons one. Where one is literally a talking present. He's also married in this one. It makes no sense. Okay. And then Tiny Tim is the dog Astro who does die in the future. Oh no! Sprockets, and then the Jetsons sue him for. Well, I would assume they would have to sue him because of that. Where the Cratchits do sue Scrooge for Tiny Tim's death, unless he advertised those sprockets as dog digestible. I don't think you have a case there. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. With oh yeah, by the way, that's what uh, Cell Specs looks like. Well, her character for her YouTube channel. Will arrive at the chiming of a bell. Hey, you know what a tragic dark story that showcases heaven and hell and has the protagonist die twice needs? Well, first a sequel where he supposedly comes back to life. I was about to say that they are going to mention the sequel that came out. Um, also, I think not the best step to follow up a movie about that is a TV series. Now, I could possibly be wrong because I remember seeing something about there being a All Dogs Go to Heaven TV series. Again, could be wrong. I remember watching it in a uh, in church somewhere, or that might have been the Christmas special, the Christmas Carol take on this. But again, I feel like there was a TV series that came out after the success of the first movie and the semi-success of the sequel. So, Carface uses this whistle to hypnotize dogs into oh, giving him Well, dog that just popped up. From the devil. And he's going to do the same thing citywide just because the devil wants to ruin Christmas. I think it was said that was her sister. That was like the angel's sister. I don't know. Not doing that. This is painful. Okay, sure. Utilizing the devil or devil stand in does make for some amusingly insane moments. But mostly, it's just terrible. The animation is spastic. I find even stiff, limited animation way preferable to this kind that just makes characters move randomly for the sake of moving. And adding songs to anything tends to have a multiplying effect on the quality. Good songs make something okay great. Bad songs make it unbearable. Guess which one this is. But mostly, I just hate that they did this to these characters. So while this movie did break me, to take it mildly serious for a second, I was minorly intrigued at how each of his ghost encounters were conveyed to him through various mediums. Charlie as Marley is shown to him through a TV, he gets sucked into a radio, the ghost of Christmas future comes out of a comic book, and oh, okay, yeah. odds, Carface's song about his tragic puppyhood is actually a little bit stirring. And then Charlie steals Yako's shtick of the future. And while doing it, dressed up as the mask. Well, the mask from uh, the animated TV series. This is the only one I actively hate. Man, I can't imagine any other anthropomorphic mm. animal version being this bad. In fact, this one looks kind of cute. I wonder what it's. Oh no! Okay. He really phoned in this B stars OVA. Curse you, deceptive covers! Okay, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Is this really better than the Yikes! Carol? <laughs> yes, yes it is. Anyone getting Rhapsody Street Kid vibes? But if you replace all the characters with talking animals? Yeah. Looking like Food Fight's holiday special, everything it does even mildly competently makes it seem all the more impressive. It is somewhat amusing to see what animals are going to play which part, especially in the ghosts. Of course the ghost of Christmas... Yeah. I think it's safe to say this one looks pretty bad. I think you heard me saying that I kind of had, like, Rhapsody Street Kids vibes going on. But that one was way worse than this. I mean, I like the characters in this. Just the CGI doesn't really work for me on them. I mean... CGI animation, it's okay for movies like DreamWorks and, you know, Pixar, stuff like that. But when it's this of low-budget CGI animation, 
Oh boy, no. The ghost of Christmas future? Oh, you need to see this. I see a broken tusk. Is that? Why? a story alteration that I You could have picked any other animal to be the ghost of Christmas future. And they picked a walrus. Nothing wrong with walruses, just not really something you want to see as a ghost that's going to tell you your future. Oh, that's sad. But I do appreciate the added context about his sour attitude toward Fred specifically. Might as well work with characters we already have rather than bringing in new ones. But then it softballs the ending by having Tiny Tim not die, but instead becoming just as curmudgeonly as... Huh? Though it could be a mild reference to the fact that there has actually been quite a few unofficial sequels to Christmas Carol, where Tim does become the new Scrooge. But no oh, there was a sequel to the story. I did not know that. Also here, apparently Scrooge died by having his gold literally fall on him. How dare you have him die in such a hilarious wow. way and then not show it? Oh sure, its production value alone makes its existence pretty inexcusable. Oh, but hold on. There were some surprises. Let's get rid of that. Oh no! Fun fact! Me and my sister used to own Barbie movies on VHS and I think on DVD also. The only Christmas-related one that we watched was Barbie's The Nutcracker. And honestly, I did not think that there was a Barbie Christmas Carol. But oh lord, there is. No. Uh, I feel like one day Barbie is just going to take over the world. Y'all feel me on that? Oh, yeah. Including you. Yeah, we're really inching our way up that animation quality. But it did intrigue me seeing how the story would be changed when it's gender flipped. Well, first of all, we can't have Barbie being an unlikable character. So this yeah, is I forgot that the... <sighs> With the Barbie movies, when it's a story she's telling, it has to be on one of her many, many cousins that, if we're going to be honest, it's just Barbie dressing up as them and her friends doing the same. We've already started seeing a certain pattern when it comes to animated adaptations, or let's face it, adaptations for children. Aside from death, we both softball Scrooge's tragic past, but also make Scrooge worse than he actually is. Frequently, it's just a matter of light physical violence, but then, you know, sing. <sighs> but even here, Scrooge never threatened to fire Cratchit just for celebrating Christmas. He just complained loudly about it. And his hatred of Christmas was because a lot of reasonably upsetting life events just happened to happen on Christmas. This time, Eden hates Christmas because her Aunt Marie had her practice singing instead of celebrating. Well, it's understandable why she would think her career was more important, but you literally opened this film with a theater full of people paying her to sing Christmas songs. At least Eden is a good singer. But unsurprisingly, the most prominent shift is stripping away all of the dark and horror elements. Neither Marley nor the Ghost of Christmas Future are remotely scary. Future has lines and a face. And again... And it seems like she's also rather, getting a song, I guess. We don't know what happened. And of course, Eden doesn't see her grave. What she does see is herself being poor and forgotten after she got attacked by some animals and a hypnotist got her to cluck like a chicken, and that's how she Okay. Wow, cancel culture really has gotten extreme. And then when she tries to ask Catherine for help, echoing the last entry, now Catherine has become the diva, but also Eden did unjustifiably fire her, so tells her to F off. As a reimagining, it's definitely tame, but it's functional. Some people really do only learn when the shoe is on the other foot. Rough animation and accents mm. aside, it's not a painful watch. I do like the ghosts. The true queens of the Barbie world right here, ladies and gentlemen. From the number of times we hear, in a selfish world, the selfish succeed. 
is the badly animated comic relief cat. Yeah, that always seems to be a problem. Amongst the least popular of Dickens' stories, not bad. And the Ghost of Christmas Past is just really annoying and fangirly and an animal torturer. How could what? Rarity? What? Oh. Anyway, according to my Barbie movie expert, this is apparently one of the better ones of those. Take that as you will. All right. You always buy a handkerchief or an awful tie. Look at this tie and you'll know why. When I get Christmas presents, I say trash. Mm. Okay, first of all, I know... That definitely was an anime-esque sound effect. ...Frankenbass retelling, especially in regards to its music. And all I can say is, I kind of get where they're coming from, but also doubt that that person has seen some of the other priors on this list. Low bar, certainly, but... I yeah, I was wondering if this was a Rankin and Bass, uh, production, because it looks like a Rankin and Bass film. ...and a lot of them, as songs, are fairly okay, but they are certainly not done any favors by being erratically presented and performed. And considering its budget, there are some animated moments, including backgrounds, that look... <laughs> <laughs> that do not. Too yeah, badly, those animals look like they were singing. This animation and the songs together kind of brings out the worst in both. Playing songs in its full length when you're animating oh, geez. very much means that there's a lot of times where your characters are just kind of standing there. The pauses in the animation highlight the pauses in the music, creating a whole bunch of just dead air that just makes the song feels even longer when they're already pretty repetitive. This sounds like Bring Him Home from Les Mis for some reason. Of course. And decrease the surplus population! And then have 12 of them in 50 minutes. And because they're taking up so much time, the story bits in between the songs have to rush. The entire part in the future is like just barely over a minute long. Then on top of that, having yet another animated unnecessary animal tag-along that's also an unnecessary okay. narrator. Okay. Willing to show Belle as an old woman, I'd still reiterate that it is not the worst, but if that's its biggest strength, it's not great either. Oh, you made the toys have a song? Well, that's it. You sealed your fate. Give up on my bob. He'll go buy a so, you have a Christmas Carol adaptation from Deke Entertainment with Tim Curry voicing Scrooge and also singing. Honestly, I think that sounds pretty awesome, considering we know Tim Curry has a pretty good singing voice. So how exactly could this be bad? Or qualified as bad? I know for a fact Deke Entertainment has made some pretty good shows. Not really sure how this could be bad, but we'll find out. ...not be great. Appropriate, since Curry himself has done the role on stage. Kinda wish I could say that about anything else in this. Actually, this version animated by Deke has quite a few notable voices in it, including Whoopi Goldberg, Michael York, Ed Asner, Frank Welker, okay. and Jody Benson. You know, Ariel, Barbie. Because as we all know, celebrities, including Tim Curry, have only been in good things. Just listen to these impeccable English accents. So he spent a bit of passion from so many dads. Where's your pride in that, eh? Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad British accent for Cat Susie. Not that bad at all. VHS quality where the lip flaps are never quite right. But then you suddenly get things like these terrible ornament reflection shots and... Marley's ghost effects and uh, looks like something out of uh, Archie's weird mysteries actually step up in terms of book accuracy though with some modern liberties to break your chain oh well this popped up again I like change it does keep all of the major beats from the book including a dead time Tim but also includes a bunch of unnecessary things like another yeah because, you know, I figured as much. It's a kid's cartoon. They gotta have, you know, pet sidekicks. ...for him to feel connected to Fred and Tiny Tim. Because after young Scrooge essentially sings his version of Reading Rainbow, he sees Tiny Tim reading his favorite book, Robinson Crusoe. 
Oof, thank goodness, or else it would have been okay to let him die. And then Fred starts singing a, an incredibly silly song that Scrooge and Fran sang together as children. Which can say- At least got him toe-tapping. So that's good. Yeah, it's another musical. Though this time the songs do sound like there's been some effort put into them. Though, why does a song called Random Acts of Kindness sound so sinister? Random Acts of Kindness! Random Acts of Kindness! Just well, when you have it sounding like a godly choir going on, then yeah, it will sound a little sinister. Sure, he chucks coal at a street rat. He's done that in other versions. But then he makes Cratchit go get the pieces he just threw. Really? Oh, right. Wow! Beat Tiny Tim in front of his dad. And the only one where we apparently bring Fred to the Cratchit so Scrooge can do the reconciliation at the same time. And I admit, the end feels genuinely joyful. So this one is rough, but okay for a direct-to-video. But if all you want is curry, your best bet is to look up the audiobook of him narrating the original story. Twas hmm. the night before Christmas and all through the... Wait a minute, wrong script. Let's see... Here it is. Bob Cratchit picks up some. Um. And it was the night before Christmas. So there. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, this actually is a Christmas Carol anime. Oh no! Bond and localized by probably jet lag and good times. Only this time, somebody apparently what? just reached the end of their rope and just went, "Who gives a shit?" Because, well. You mean to tell me he's a. Mm -hmm. Tim is a jockey, one of the best on the circuit, too. And the <laughs> his horse keeps falling over on him twice this month. Oh, wow, that's awful. His parents better get him a horse that won't fall over before it's too late. Oh, no. Tim, Tim will keep riding him. And okay. I think it's this point I have to say... You gotta at least uh, give credit to good dub voice actors out there that are trying their best with trying to recreate dialogue from the original source material anime. But wow, was that bad. Oh, wow, that was just... Uh, talk about bad dubbing, people. And I know for a fact, there are some other anime shows, like Korean anime, that have dub actors that are at least trying. Squish City, huh? Wow, that's bad. Did he really just say Squish City? And is the narrator Chris Parnell? And as Scrooge watches the little family, it slowly dawns on him that he is the bad guy in this cartoon. I have no idea where this came from, but thank you for letting me find it. Oh, I remember this one. Oh God, no. NPH's Uncanny Valley okay, that was weird. There was a weird little glitch oh, there. It was just a but it's fine if it's still continuing. I've never been so happy to be misled by a cover. Fittingly, this special follows Grumpy Smurf. Wait, Grouchy. You can understand the confusion. But what horrible thing happened in his past that made- And I'm being honest, this was the only best part of this whole entire special. Cheerful? Just the fact that they went with the old animation style of the Smurfs. Instead of making it completely CGI. Leading to him not doing his Christmas chores, which leads to Clumsy setting the tree on fire. Leading to the Smurfs needing to get a new tree, which leads to the horrible future of being captured by guards. Of course. That's a little bit of a stretch, but just to see the Smurfs in this high-quality, pristine 2D animation, it is worth it. It's cute, it's sweet, and while Grouchy is not particularly sympathetic, every part in here is really greatly performed, and it manages to squeeze out a little bit of genuine sentiment. Nothing else, it is by far the best Smurf thing they've made in the past decade. All the dreams that Pony Oh, That's some pretty good singing, I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, for Luna, that's some pretty good singing. ...is not a point against it. It is fun to see the Christmas Carol roles played out by these familiar characters, all of which are expertly cast, except maybe Fluttershy should have been Cratchit. But this is also taking the Christmas Carol concept, not really the story, the concept, and supplanting it in a world with its own mythology and magic rules. And yeah! Day, which is just make a spell or something. 
Because, yeah, that's the perfect character to cast as Ebenezer Scrooge in this adaptation. I mean, either her or Trixie, if you think about it. She cast a spell to be rid of it forever. Yeah, not wanting to go to a party, wanting to get rid of the holiday for everyone forever, that's the same. Wait, so is this Carol or the Grinch? And what horrible tragedy happened in her packs that drove her to such extremes? Getting scoffed at by a teacher. Well, underwhelming motive is very stupid. Well, it wasn't that Pony Ebenezer Scrooge, because clearly he fit the part. Oh, that's adorable! Okay. Cell had her own little pony OC. That's cute. They have their own version of Christmas called Heartswarming Eve with its own origin story that I've already made a video of. Long story short, a bunch of racist tyrants yelled at their subordinates until a bunch of blizzard horses came and froze everything, and only one of them responded over talking about how much they hated their bosses. Basically, <laughs> being negative attracts blizzards, unless it makes you laugh, I guess. And that's why Equestria is constantly throwing... Oh! Because if enough people get too depressed... So basically, keep the entire world happy, or... Snow pony demons will come and freeze the entire world and destroy everything. It just seems like everything just wants to destroy happiness. And if you don't keep things happy, it will be destroyed. You know, that literally is something that Celestia and Luna need to keep an eye on more than the economy and making sure parades are going on or stuff like that. Like, seriously? That's just... It's just stupid. Like, really, really stupid. Yeah, Story-wise, this is ridiculous. But its presentation and its technicals and its entertainment value are actually pretty high. But mostly for MLP fans. And I... Yeah, like I said, this whole video is two videos in one, and each video is about 20 minutes long, so... Here's best of luck to me trying to make this whole in all into one video, and hopefully again... This doesn't end up being an hour-long video, so... No special intro, we're just jumping straight into the second video. So I'm assuming, at this point, now we're gonna talk about the best adaptations of Christmas Carol. Or we're probably still gonna find some more, even worse ones, and then talk about the best ones. Again, not sure how this video is gonna work out, but... Let's see. What the hell is this? Satan's here! Yep, this is the stuff we saw last video. Tim Curry. Why do you have a face, Tim? Jackie? What? Yeah. Conform to tradition. That is a good question. Seriously, what is this? Well, that was a roller coaster. Now on to the good. All right, part two. Here we go. Seriously, a few of these may Honestly, her in a Christmas hat or a Santa Claus hat like that makes her just look super adorable. Whoa. After all these wow. years, have finally cleared up the confusion. Christmas Carol the movie. Well, I guess some of them are specials. This cross-European creation with the voices of Nick Cage, Kate Winslet, and Michael Gambon has slightly more addendums than your- That voice did kind of sound like Nicolas Cage as Jacob Mar- Oh, and it starts off live action. Like another kid's movie we all know. Scrooge now has this despicable underling that carries out his evictions. And, oh my god, if I have to see one more distracting animal sidekick... Yep. I'm going to continue to... I think it's safe to say at this point that... Kids movies that are retellings of classic stories... Really don't need animal sidekicks in them. I get it. It's to make the kids happy and you don't want them to be too sad when the real stuff of the story happens. But literally, Christmas Carol, it's a, it's, a lot of it is sad. So you really don't need animal sidekicks just to liven things up as much. Kids will understand. Trust me. Though there is a fun line where Scrooge goes, 
Don't worry about the mice, they were on time. That was cute. But these mice do eat up a lot of screen time and are practically in their own movie as we constantly see them being separated and reunited while also trying to draw Scrooge's attention to a letter he received from Belle, which is the biggest addition. We see her from the start working at a hospital whose debt gets transferred over to guess who, and so she writes to him for his help. And in this version, Belle was well. Fran's best friend, so she and Scrooge have known each other since they were children. Man, with all of these changes, this must be a radically different retelling, right? Nope. These are add-ons, not alterations. They don't really make the movie different as much as they make it longer. The only I think all the shadows and the shading on the characters are really good. Office for some reason. Wow. The way Jacob Marley came in, that was actually pretty cool. And again, the consequence of these elongated inserts apparently seems to be sacrificing screen time. Oh no! This episode of How Do We Make Scrooge Worse, he deprives his beloved pregnant sister any of their father's inheritance because he hates her husband. But then they also have hearing that noise. That's the wind outside. Tim's death by pouring water on him in the middle. Of wow! The Feed the mice, but pour water on the wow! Sister. Even better, Bob knows about this, and he still drinks to Scrooge's health. Now, if anyone's wondering why... So, you're just gonna not... Just it's still invite him to dinner, basically? Redemption ...just feeling less earned now. Although Scrooge is primarily a scolding reprimand directed specifically at the wealthy and the greedy, his other main sin isn't cruelty, but apathy. And that side of him, I think, is applicable to conveying the same message to the average person. But turning Scrooge into someone more unpleasant and aggressive, it changes the message from the importance of actively helping people who need it to, eh, you're fine as long as you're not a complete oh, asshole. Geez. Not to underplay the value of not being an asshole, so I'm not going to be a stickler for that if it's not a straight book adaptation. But that aside, the only minor contribution these additions might provide is showing more consequences and victims of Scrooge's callousness, including the cruel people the wealthy can enable in the name of good business. But most of it just feels like pointless padding and just serves to make the message feel incredibly heavy-handed. And despite her added screen time, Belle doesn't get any more development, we don't learn anything more about their relationship, and while some might appreciate a version where Scrooge and Belle are able to reconcile, despite that half of this movie's purpose has been building this up, man, it is such a boring conversation that it's not satisfying. That's another thing. When it's not book accurate dialogue, the script is just boring. And then on top of that, it's not a particularly good looking film. Yes, the animation might move better than others, and it may Some beautiful that, animation, you gotta be honest with that. Very plain and unremarkable, and the overall look is so drab and gray. Well, it is London, I'll give it that. Okay, this is random, but at the end they play what I think is supposed to be Belle's song, and it just reminded me way too much of the song from the animated Titanic movie. Yeesh. Ooh, yeah, we can't forget about that. I like the animation on Marley, and by far the movie's standout is the scene where the ghost of Christmas present flies over the city, where we see where all of the color and the artistic talent went, and it is genuinely beautiful. It also showcases oh. a book detail that doesn't always... Yeah, this would pop up. ...the present uses his torch to essentially flavor the people's food, which also causes them to cease their course. And he's spreading he cheer with his magical he horn. ...did try something different, but the whole is just a not very interesting watch. And in the ranking, honestly, I would put it under the Saban version, maybe even Barbie. And I'm sorry, but when exactly did this come out? Literally every single um, source says... Um, okay... Oh, we were going to talk about this, I guess. And yeah, like I said, The Simpsons did a pretty good parody of this, honestly, with their character, Mr. McGrew. Surrounded by the gimmick of he couldn't see very well, mistaking objects and animals for people, that sort of thing. Maybe an odd choice for Scrooge, but aside from an extended intro with Magoo doing his usual shtick and establishing that he's participating in a play, this special is a very thorough and book scripted retelling. And there's a lot of great energy, but also sincerity in Magoo's performance, especially for a character known for being perpetually gleeful. Belle, Belle, don't leave! Belle, Belle, don't. Oh. <laughs> present and past are flipped for some reason, I don't know. However, Magoo does have some of these similar afflictions to the stingiest man in town. 
It is another musical with limited animation, so the songs feel like they're freezing yeah. the story in place and going on about Clearly the like drawing had frozen fingers. Being largely static. The benefits, however, the songs are a bit catchier, written by the guy who wrote Let It Snow, and there's... Is that really the only not dance not move they know? Isn't nearly as bad. I liked the beginning duet between Scrooge and Cratchit, but Despicable? That's one that feels like it drags forever. Um... The are simpler, I feel like they have a much larger range of expression, making the special able to carry the emotion much better. And even if they're stiff, their character designs are way more appealing. Tiny Tim is actually cute in this. But it also has its share of unintentional humor. Uh... Faded to a point, but this is pretty good, especially for a first outing. The first... I mean, can we really call this an adaptation of A Christmas Carol? It's basically the Ghostbusters being transported into the story. And if they're really getting transported to the time period the story took place in, are they kind of like messing things up in the future? That, that has to create some kind of weird paradox in some Ghostbusters universe fandom or something there. That has to do something, but, you know, just saying. Honestly, it's still a good episode. But it's just kind of neat. In an episode of the real Ghostbusters, the Ghostbusters are sent back in time via... Yeah, that's how they get transported into the story. A weird snowstorm. Yeah, they also... Also, the three ghosts are just there at the same time. Which results in the holiday being erased. I guess the man who invented Christmas was only a mild exaggeration. Is that an actual movie? Anyway, or is that a fan-made film someone made? Have to go back and play the parts of the ghosts. Well, that just sounds delightful. Is that a freaking viewfinder? Oh, <laughs> what do you see now? Yeah, how did they get these pictures? There's also demon ghosts in the episode, too. On Christmas. Whoa. Thanks for that. Oh, yeah. I figured we'd talk about this one at some point. Honestly, this one is one of my favorite adaptations of the story. Not only is it, like, dark and scary and has a real good mood setting for the entire, like, story of it, but the motion capture, at sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it's all done by the actors that do it, especially Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey does a pretty good Ebenezer Scrooge, honestly. He's got that perfect voice for him, honest, if I'm being honest. Camps when it comes to this film. The one that praises it for being the most loyal is adaptation for containing the most book accurate dialogue, the camp that condemns it for being motion capture, aka me, and the camp that is completely traumatized. Oh yeah, that was a terrifying moment. His name on it. And that's saying something. The latter two camps tend to converge frequently. Okay, that's a little too simplistic, as many give it credit for all the visual craft that isn't painful to look at. And I admit, maybe the backlash to its use of motion capture is a bit excessive. Oh, the characters still do not look great, but I do admit that a lot of motion capture antagonism was at a time when CGI was gradually becoming the norm and being genuinely worried if this was the direction we were headed. Thankfully not, because everyone agrees it looks terrible. But I can understand animators at the time attempting it just to see if it would work, and some audiences just being fascinated in a time capsule, different aesthetic kind of way. And sure, there is something mesmerizing and even admirable about the character's construction, while also thinking aside from the general datedness and awkwardness, even just as photorealistic human designs that they're all really ugly. But most of the other aspects of the animation are actually quite nice. Like the snowy cityscapes are utterly gorgeous, and it did have a number of clever visual concepts. Like flying over the city through the floor, the best visual adaptation of the amorphous ghosts of Christmas past. Oh, okay, yeah, that was... His shadow, Woo! A shadow, his shadow. Give me one second. Okay, if I'm gonna be honest, I would love this backdrop for my wall or as a wallpaper 
for my laptop because this this is a dope looking uh, scene right here. Just the the f spirit of Christmas future coming out of the storm. It's just awesome. Got that happened. Ah, and that too. Where they were really pushing that 3D. Yeah, this was at this point when Disney really wanted to push the 3D out. With the excessively cartoonish, and it's not just about the flip between the Dickensian script and the explosions and the slapstick, or even between the horror and the comedy. Yeah, it's just the actors flipping between being solemn and extremely hammy. There's a reason why we don't do this anymore. But as I said, the fact that we don't do this anymore makes this something very unique. And for that, and obviously nostalgia, I can see people's attachment to this. Alright. Oh. Hey! Well, that's an interesting spin on trespassing, pandering, and illegal solicitation. Firstly, I know that there's technically a Looney Tunes short with yourself. Oh yeah! There was another version of this. But I guess they went with the sort of recent one. And actually, it was also due to the success of uh, Billy West voicing Bugs in Space Jam. Crazy. And just as a Looney Tunes sketch, it's funny, it's energetic, it's a great use of these characters. When a disgruntled employee swaffed me with a forklift. Nine times. But this is way more Looney Tunes than Christmas Carol. Literally. There's so many examples of Daffy abusing his employees and Bugs abusing him that the ghosts mm -hmm. maybe take up a third of the runtime. I'm not gonna get too down on non-book adaptations being worse than Scrooge anymore, especially since Daffy being the worst is kind of his thing. Sorry, and if he's got something in my eye. Then he wouldn't be deserving of all of the extremely egregious physical violence he suffers in this picture. But when he's been so consistently awful to everyone and so dismissive of the ghosts, even when we get to his grave, you don't believe for a second that he feels bad about what he's done. And then at the very last minute, the tiny Tim stand in, Porky's niece, says such a heartfelt speech to his grave with these little Christmas cookies. Aww, that's and so adorable. Enough that he would be touched by it. But just barely. And others have disagreed. They think that Daffy is too awful in this. And then he goes so over the top compensating his employees that he almost has a relapse. It's that just makes me think it's a typical Daffy Duck episode where he has to learn a lesson. Oh yeah, this was one. Like I said, Jetsons made one. Oh yeah, Flintstones made one. Jetsons had to make one. about it for pretty much the same reason. Fred Flintstone himself is playing Scrooge in a community play, but at the same time needs to learn his own lesson in humility because, let me guess, he's being a greedy, self-involved prick inconveniencing everyone around him. Oh gee, how did I guess that? So the story is around putting on the play, but we also see the play itself being performed in real time and watching how the play and life start to blend. Where during the play, Fred starts seeing flashes of his own greed and failings. It isn't much fun being ignored by your father and left all alone at school, is it? No, boys. There's a BoJack season five joke here somewhere. Uh, maybe. Friends of all things would have such a fairly book accurate script, and Fred himself is actually a pretty good Scrooge. There are scenes near the end where he sounds absolutely desperate. But the other unique development is that over the course of the play, actors keep getting sick and dropping out and their parts need to be picked up by Wilma, who plays the ghost of Christmas past, as well as- Oh, okay, just the fact that she had to play almost every single part. Another version where Scrooge and Belle reconcile. A change, really, Wilma? Only with the proper context that it makes sense, and the characters have enough personality that I care, even if it is Fred. I am definitely not a Flintstones fan at all, but I was genuinely. Yeah, honestly, now that I think about it, Barney and uh, Betty definitely were perfect as Cratchit and uh, his wife. Ah! Is ignorance. This girl is want. Oh, that is just. But most of all, that is just so creepy. Boy. 
Richard Williams as the animator of Who Framed Roger Rabbit and the author of that book. That oh yeah, I remember movie. seeing that in my middle school. Trying to create quote the greatest animated film of all time, he created this utterly beautiful rendition of such acclaim that it won Best Animated Short at the Academy. Award. For some reason, the animation reminds me of um, you know those um, you know that Superman peanut butter commercial. That's what the animation kind of reminds me of. And especially if you cherish this story as a ghost story, that is the tone it retains throughout this special. It has some of the eeriest sequences of any adaptation. Just this shot of Scrooge walking through his dark house. And for the longest time, this was the most accurate representation of the amorphous ghost of Christmas past. It really is a testament that is just animation is such too creepy. These kinds of fantastical stories. But if that's the case, why is this not championed every year as a Christmas must-watch? More likely because of the way it was made, to a modern audience, the special may come across as unfinished. The special mostly has no background score outside of a couple of sound effects, which definitely helps the eerie atmosphere, but when paired okay. with these, Making rats even more scary than they already were. Rapid cuts were the instances of supernatural travel. Pronouncing on the too much life among his hungry brothers in the dust. What place is this? My little child. And because of its book accurate script, but its tight 25 minute runtime, yeah. More as, a as soon as it starts happening, this stuff pops up a lot. Naturally flowing story. And not that it matters, but is comfort and joy the only carol these people know? It's definitely rough, mm. but for much of it, its beauty and its tone are unmatched. And it is definitely worth seeing at least once. Christmas. Thank heaven it only comes once a year. Too bad it starts in July. I had never even heard of this apparently decades-old Hallmark character until some Yeah, I was about to say, that was a comic series I didn't really I know so much glad. about. Also, for some reason, the animation and reminds and me of Recess. Like, the later episodes of Recess. But this is so nostalgic. This is so strip comics late 90s. Voiced by the always great Trez McNeil, I think, Maxime is a beacon of snark and sass and grumpiness and general not giving a shitness. This is someone who would have gotten... Sorry, one second. All right, sorry, had to answer a message and deal with something real quick. But hopefully we'll be able to finish this video off pretty soon. And it's going to be a lot of editing to get through. And it's gonna take a while, but hey, I'm glad I could do this video, honestly. So, let's continue on and see what else we got for the best Christmas Carol adaptation. I don't know how much longer we can... We got, I don't know, I meant, that's what I meant to say. Once was enough. But let's <laughs> a little bit about those who care about her. Granted, the future in this one is perhaps the That's the whole point of, like, Christmas. Be kind to others, and they'll be kind to you. ...the influence that adults can have on developing children, but he becomes a miserly Christmas-hating CEO because Maxime didn't go to a party he invited her to. Yeah, that's a little much. But no, I'm not going to give this comedy grief for not killing... Feels so weird. Now with that kid wearing the red cap, this really reminds me of the animation used for, uh, Recess. Which is perfectly fine because Maxime is amazing. This entire special was a blast. Well, it's late 90s cheese, don't go expecting community. Even the ghosts are conceptually fun. Past is an outdated valley girl. What is it with turning the ghosts of Christmas past into annoying twats? Though it's funny, seeing her flashback made her quit. Present is one of those hippies. What is time? All we have is now, man. Time is an illusion, Maxine. Tick tock, tick tock, seconds, minutes, hours, they just go. The only man with that voice does not sound like a stereotypical hippie voice. And I can't get any weirder. Are you for real? Aliens with a time machine. This is amazing. <laughs> okay, that's different. Special with Maxine, and I have no aliens with a time travel device that are also life. the ghosts of Christmas future. This is my favorite modernized Christmas Carol by far. Well, almost. I'll give them Christmas, but the other 364 days are mine. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is a classic one. 
And of course, it's Animaniacs, so it's gonna be awesome. Compacted in a tight 12 minutes, unsurprisingly, Animaniacs' quick take of this story just brings me so much joy. Appropriately, the studio boss, Mr. Plotz, takes the role of Scrooge, opening the episode by firing Ralph, only to then be haunted by each of the You're also gonna feel really, really bad for, uh, Ralph. Also, Slappy being Marley for 30 seconds, but 30 seconds of Slappy is still way funnier than hours of other characters. <laughs> Honestly, Slappy is such a great character. I don't know, I lost the other page. But clearly, Slappy <laughs> didn't acknowledge such a downer concept as death. Yep, there's Tim as the new Scrooge again. Gosh, yeah, of course. Counter for this. Still seeing Plots as the new Ralph was like perfect karma. Regardless, now that's a terrible future. And it's Animaniacs, so it wins. My criteria is so inconsistent. Oh. oh, and of course, we go to one of my other favorite Christmas Carol adaptations with Disney characters. And more old people sass. Weird connection between my top three choices. Yeah, we're not even going to pretend that this isn't somewhat of a nostalgia bias here. It's my list. Get over it. And certainly not a perfect or even remotely thorough adaptation of the book. Oof. But we're talking about a complete, consistently high quality animated experience that captures the spirit of the book. Mickey oh, yeah, and the way they mix shadows some of the times in this one, it's really great. Time of only 25 minutes. The story being portrayed through iconic Disney characters and various Easter eggs, and boy, and then the random adding of the characters from uh, not in very much. yeah, there's also that, but adding the random characters from uh, other Disney movies where you think some of the characters would remember them, but they don't. Aspects of the story, even with Goofy portraying Marley, the shot of him following Scrooge up the stairs. <laughs> also, it's a nice little reference to uh, Nosferatu. It's one of the very few vivid memories I have as a child where I saw his shadow on my own stairs. And Scrooge being pushed into a flaming grave is still terrifying. Oof. We know the same thing happens in the Carrie version, but that's after an hour and a half of other crazy terrifying shit happening. At that point, it's lost its impact. This is a genuine shock. You didn't expect Especially for a Disney cartoon, it's a dark moment. Able to be fun and entertaining without going through complete tonal whiplash is a testament to the many Disney legends that worked on this. The song in the credits is beautiful, and even though it's technically a short special, this frankly is more of a masterpiece than anything else Disney was making in the 80s. And can we get a shout out to all the homage? Oh, I did not expect them to do that! Amazing. That's pretty cool! Episode. Not sure why they needed to redesign the spirits, they're all Disney. What, did you match your cameo quota for that season? But it was an interesting take on the spirits, I greatly enjoyed this episode, and those credits. So that is every single animated Christmas Carol adaptation. And yes, I got all of them, don't look it up. There was a bit of a question on whether to add Muppet Christmas Carol. Oh, okay. Could not be impeccably designed from scratch I mean, if we're going to be honest, like you could have like put it as like an honorable mention. That isn't a lie, which is why That actually would have been a cool idea. All right, there you have it, guys. That was my reaction to Cell Specs' worst to best Christmas carols and Apologies if the video got too long. I didn't expect them to just be two videos spread, uh, split into two and the videos being actually 20 minutes long, both each of them, I mean. But I really hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. And honestly, you guys should go check out Cell Specs. She, she's an awesome person and her reviews are fun to watch and just stuff that she talks about is really cool to watch too. Uh, I'll try to get back to normal reactions also, and stuff that people requested. I will try to get to that as much as I can, and as quick as I can as I will, but, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, with that being said, thank you all for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell to never miss a new video. So, I will see all you awesome guys and gals later. Bye-bye!